The series begins with a guy named Ty, who comes back home and catches his dad, Peepob, kissing a girl. At first, Ty didn't react much. He just told his dad not to bring any more foreign girls to their house. But when he realized that the girl was Kong Sara, his girlfriend, Ty was really surprised and upset. He stormed out of the house in anger. Outside, Ty was stopped by Platsara, who was Kong Sara's best friend and younger sister. Ty was mad at Platsara because she had helped hide the affair between Kong Sara and his dad. Platsara was crying and insisting that she didn't know about the affair, but Ty didn't believe her and decided to leave. Two years later, Ty had completely cut ties with his dad and was living on the streets with no job or place to stay. One day in the city of Chiang Mai, he came across a girl named Pi Napa who was drowning. Ty tried to save her, but a bystander misunderstood and thought he was bothering Pi Napa. This led to Ty getting beaten up by the residents. On the flip side, Peepob never made an effort to find Ty, even though Ty had been gone for two years. Peepob didn't seem to care much, even though Ty is his only child. Surprisingly, his heart disease came back, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. At that time, Platsara stayed with Peepob and looked very worried about him. But when they got to the hospital, Peepob couldn't get treatment right away because all the doctors were in a meeting. Platsara got frustrated and burst into the meeting room where the doctors were. She told them that her uncle was dying. Satap, one of the hospital leaders, tried to calm Platsara down, but she was insistent. Her determination impressed Savatap. Meanwhile, Tai was at the Chiang Mai police station, accused of harassing Pin Napa. However, Pin Napa's father, We Set Thumb, soon arrived and dropped the charges against Tai, saying it was just a misunderstanding. In fact, We Set Thumb believed that Tai was a good person. But living on the streets had taken a toll on Tai's health, and he suddenly collapsed in the middle of the street. When We Set Thumb took Tai to the hospital, he was diagnosed with acute pneumonia and severe stress. Meanwhile, in another hospital, Peepop's condition was getting bad, and one of the reasons was his longing for Tai. Even though Peepop felt guilty about Tai, he was still in a relationship with Kong Sara. Despite their significant age difference, he genuinely loved her. However, it seemed like Kong Sara was only using Peepop to get money. When Platsara saw Kong Sara constantly asking Peepop for money, she reminded Kong Sara not to disappoint Peepop as he had been willing to end his relationship with Tai for her sake. To ease Platsara's concerns, Kong Sara claimed that she also loved Peepob sincerely and asked Platsara to take good care of him. Several months later in the city of Chiang Mai, the Wee Set Thumb plantation was thriving, thanks to Al from Thai, who was a former agriculture student. On that day, Wee Set Thumb learned that Tai had run away from home and asked him to reconcile with his father, hoping you end Tai's two years of suffering. We set them understood that Tai missed his father, but was held back by the anger he felt. However, Tai was still upset and said he could never forgive his father, who had been dating his girlfriend. Tai also shared the memory of the night when he caught Kong Sara and his father. He had just come home, greeted Plat Sara, and showed her a house design he had made for when he and Kong Sara got married. There he asked Plat Sara if Kong Sara would like the design. Plat Sara nervously replied, and suggested that Tai should talk to Kong Sara directly. With a happy expression, Tai went into his father's room and accidentally caught Kong Sara and his father being affectionate. Tai was shocked and angry, asking them why they were being so heartless toward him. He also felt betrayed because even Plat Sara had covered up their affair. After hearing Tai's story, We Set Thumb felt sorry for him and understood why Tai was so angry with his father. We set them reassured Tai that he could tell everything to him from now on, considering Tai as his own child. Tai was moved to tears by this gesture. Meanwhile, at Peepop's house, Kong Sara hired nurses from the hospital, led by Sa Tap, to help take care of Peepop. However, Plat Sara disagreed and insisted that she could take care of Peepop on her own. Sa Tap explained that having medical personnel care for Peepop would improve his condition, but Peepop disagreed and asked Sa Tap and the nurses to leave his house. This upset Kong Sara, who believed Peepop needed the medical team's help because she couldn't be with him all day. At that time, Peepop felt hurt and annoyed, thinking that he was just a burden to Kong Sara. This led to Kong Sara becoming increasingly indifferent and ultimately leaving him. Meanwhile, over in Chiang Mai, there was a traditional ceremony where Tai and the Wee Set Thumb family officially made Tai their adopted son. After this, 
Gui Set Thumb's younger sister, Man Must, was surprised and wondered why Gui Set Thumb had gone far by adopting Tai, whose background was unclear. Man Must was also upset because now Tai would share the inheritance with Pin Napa. We Set Thumb calmly explained that it wasn't a problem and clarified that he trusted Tai to take care of the plantation if something happened to him. In another place, the employees of the We Set Thumb plantation were talking about Tai while they were drunk. One of the employees, Muang, couldn't accept the fact that Tai, who was new, had been adopted by We Set Thumb and was going to inherit the plantation. The employees were divided into two groups. Some were supportive of Tai, while others, including Muang, were against him. They even argued over trivial matters. Soon after, Tai arrived to break up the argument. However, Muang challenged Tai to a duel to prove who was better. Tai agreed, and they made a deal that if he lost, he would leave the plantation, but if he won, Muang would have to acknowledge Tai as the boss and serve him for the rest of his life. Hearing that, Muang agreed, and the duel began. Surprisingly, Tai easily outmatched Muang, making him feel embarrassed and not want to keep his end of the deal. However, Tai didn't mind and suggested that Muang should buy a skirt, because he didn't consider him a man who kept his promises. Hearing this, Muang finally acknowledged Tai as his boss and admitted defeat. Meanwhile, Pipa was counting the money for his upcoming surgery costs. Kung Sara, who saw the money, immediately acted sweet and asked him to get well soon so they could continue their relationship and have children. In the evening, Tai visited his father's house but only observed from a distance. On his way home, he noticed someone sneaking into his father's room. At Pipop's house, Kong Sora secretly took the money that had been set aside and planned to run away. However, Pipop caught her and revealed that the money was a test to see her true intentions. He was angry and showed her photos as evidence of her affair with another man. There, Kong Sora apologized, but Pipop wasn't ready to forgive her. Then, Kong Sora also cruelly mentioned Pipop's age, suggesting that a young and attractive woman like her would never want him. This hurtful comment caused his heart condition to worsen, and Kung Sara pushed him and fled. Meanwhile, Plat Sara was in her room sewing, and Tai, who was outside, saw Kung Sara rushing away in her car. Tai didn't know what had happened, so he decided to go inside the house. Suddenly, he heard Plat Sara screaming when she discovered Peepob covered in blood. Soon after, Tai rushed over and checked his father's pulse, but there was none. Tai couldn't believe that his father had passed away and Platsara was in shock and hysterical, still with Peepob's condition. Then, Tai went into his father's study and found evidence of Kung Sara's affair. Seeing this, he became convinced that Kung Sara had something to do with his father's death. Kung Sara had go with her new lover named Jess and planned to flee abroad with the money. The following day, the police began investigating the case and told Tai that it was a murder because there was a stab wound in the victim's stomach. Kung Sara was now the prime suspect. Upon hearing this, Tai looked at Plat Sara, who was still crying. Tai raised his voice and demanded that Plat Sara tell him where Kung Sara was at that moment. He began to accuse Plat Sara of being involved in a conspiracy with Kung Sara. However, she refused to accept the blame and stressed that while Peepob was seriously ill, she was the one taking care of him, while Tai had not been involved in his father's care. At that time, Tai became frustrated and asked Platsar well, why she had kept the affair between Kong Sara and his father a secret. However, she remained silent and felt guilty about the situation. Platsar also shared the past when Kong Sara had told Tai that she wanted to break up because they had different life goals. Tai wanted to be a farmer, while Kong Sara didn't want to be a farmer's wife. Even after hearing this reason, he still didn't believe it and continued to blame Platsar. He told her to get ready because he planned to involve both Plat Sara and Kong Sara in the investigation into Peepob's death. The next day, Plat Sara decided to leave Tai's house and stay temporarily at Saatap's place. Despite feeling embarrassed, Saatap, who had been impressed with Plat Sara from the beginning, comforted her and told her to relax. There, Plat Sara explained to Saatap that she wanted nothing more to do with Tai and didn't want to interfere in the investigation into Peepob's death. She decided to leave everything in Tai's hands. In her room, Plat Sara couldn't help but wonder if Kong Sara might be involved in Peepob's murder case because she had seen Kung Sara in a hurry on the night Peepob died. However, she erased the idea and tried to convince herself that it was impossible for Kung Sara to be responsible. The following day, Tai began to handle the messy office matters left behind by his father. 
Shortly afterward, the family lawyer visited Ty and informed him that he was going to read his father's will, which included a request for Platsara to be present, as per Peepop's wishes. Meanwhile, Platsara and Saatap were having breakfast together. Ty suddenly arrived and wanted to join them for the meal. There, Platsara asked why Ty had come all of a sudden, but he was rude and accused her of influencing his father to the point where his father wanted to reveal his will in front of her. Ty even grabbed Platsara roughly, which angered Saatap, leading to an argument between them. Shortly after, Ty's driver arrived and calmed Ty down. Ty confirmed with Platsara to come the next morning. Hearing that, Platsara looked confused, but Saatap urged her to go, suggesting that the wool might provide clues about who the real killer of Peepop was. The next morning, Platsara came with Saatap and their lawyer to protect her from Ty's accusations. Upon seeing this, Ty told Saatap to leave because he wasn't interested in the proceedings. Unexpectedly, Saatap said he only wanted to accompany his future wife. Then, the attorney read Peepop's will. In the letter, Peepop stated that he would pass on all his assets to Ty, but with one condition that he had to marry Platsara. Hearing that, Ty and Platsara were both shocked and immediately rejected the idea of getting married as per Peepop's will. Ty even suspected that Platsara had somehow pressured his father into writing the will this way. At that time, Saad Tap was offended by Ty's accusation and warned him that he could be charged with defamation. Platsara, not wanting to continue the argument with Ty, finally made it clear that she had no interest in Peepob's inheritance. She told Ty that he could have everything and should no longer interfere in her life. Later that evening, the police updated Ty on the investigation into his father's death and confirmed that Platsara was not involved in the murder. The main suspects were Kong Sara and Jess, who were believed to be currently abroad. Back at home, Platsara realized that Saad Tap's kindness toward her must have a reason. Saad Tap also revealed that he had liked her since their time in the hospital. However, Platsara felt conflicted because she didn't have romantic feelings for Saad Tap, but was hesitant to decline his advances. Then, Platsara explained that the current situation was chaotic and asked for some time to gather her thoughts. The next day, Ty met Platsara and took her somewhere, claiming they were going to meet Kong Sara. To Platsara's surprise, Ty actually brought her to the marriage registration office. Platsara was confused and asked why she was taken there. Ty explained that he wanted to marry her to keep an eye on her, because he didn't want the accomplices of his father's killer to roam freely. Hearing that, Platsara refused, but Ty threatened her by saying that if he successfully tracked down Kong Sara, he could easily order his men to harm Kong Sara. Feeling pressured, Platsara had no choice but to agree to register her marriage with Thai. Meanwhile, Sahatap was puzzled by Platsara's sudden disappearance. Soon after, Thai invited Platsara to stay temporarily in the city of Chinmay. There, she asked why she had to obey everything Thai said, especially since she had nothing to do with Peepop's death. Platsara also mentioned that Thai should be considered a suspect too, as he had suddenly shown up on the night his father died. Ty didn't like the accusation and dragged her into the garden. However, Platsara, who had some martial arts skills, tried to resist and fight Ty. Unfortunately, he was able to overpower her and immobilize her. From the beginning, Platsara and Kong Sara were the daughters of a college lecturer. Ty, who was doing research for his final college assignment, had lived temporarily in their father's house. Eventually, he fell in love with Kong Sara, and they started a romantic relationship. However, tragedy struck when Platsara and Kong Sara's house caught fire, resulting in the death of their father who was inside. This heartbreaking event left all three of them crying hysterically, helpless to do anything. But that's not all. Lone sharks came and took away the land left by their father, claiming that it was still not enough to pay off Platsara and Kong Sara's father's debt. Peepop then came and rescued them from the lone sharks. From that day on, Platsara and Kong Sara lived in Tai's house. Over time, Kong Sara began to see Peepob as a more promising figure. In the present, Tai introduced Platsara as the servant from his former house, and he planned to employ her at Wee Set Thumb's house. We Set Thumb and Pee Napa agreed with this arrangement, especially Pee Napa, who was thrilled to have a friend of the same age. However, man must have doubts because Platsara didn't seem like a typical servant. Besides, Tai couldn't live under the same roof with a foreign woman but Ty assured man must not to worry, explaining that Platsara is a lesbian. 
Platsaro was surprised by this revelation, but didn't deny it. When they returned home, Platsaro asked Tai again why he had brought her to Qingmei. Tai revealed that Platsaro was now a hostage to lure Kong Sara out of hiding. Afterward, he went to take a shower, and Platsaro used this opportunity to search for her cell phone. But Tai wasn't dumb. He teased Platsaro by suggesting she should search his body instead of his bag. Platsaro got ready to fight and told him to stop fooling around. Surprisingly, she used to like Tai when they were both teenagers. But Tai paid more attention to Kong Sara and started a relationship with her, not knowing Platsaro's feelings. Meanwhile, Sahatap was forced to get close to a girl named Lisa for business reasons, even though he still liked Platsara. He was very sad, especially because Lisa's spoiled and excited behavior made him more upset. Then she asked Sahatap to take her somewhere urgently for business, and he had to rent an ambulance for their journey. But it turned out that Lisa only wanted to buy a fancy bag. Knowing that, Sahatap was angry with her attitude. Back again with Platsara. At that time, she asked Tai, why he was working in the Weset Thumb Garden and suspected he wanted the inheritance. Hearing that, Tai got offended and said he wasn't like Kong Sara and Platsara, who would do anything for inheritance. This made Platsara angry, and she asked why Tai was so revengeful and hateful now. She also blamed Tai for Peepom's death, because he had left his father for two years. At that moment, Tai got angry and told Platsara to be quiet and do as he said. In the evening, when Tai wasn't home, Platsara searched for her cell phone, which Tai had taken away. She eventually found it. Shortly after, he returned and couldn't find Platsara at home. He looked outside and saw Platsara drinking with the garden workers, which made him upset. He quickly brought Platsara home. In a drunken state, Platsara expressed her love for Tai, but wondered why he never saw her as a woman. Hearing that, Tai was touched and kissed her. Then, they ended up doing something fun. The next morning, Pin Napa felt like she was in love and dreamed of marrying Tai someday. Soon after, Rouge, the plantation manager, met Pin Napa. Rouge had liked Pin Napa for a while, but she told him that she loved Tai and only saw him as an older brother. Meanwhile, Platsara woke up in shock because she wasn't wearing clothes next to Tai anymore. She felt embarrassed and regretful. She tried to escape by asking for help from Muang, who was taking the harvest to the city. When they reached the city and Muang was not paying attention, Platsa Ro ran away from the car and looked for a vehicle to rent to go to Bangkok. It was at this moment that she ran into her old friend named Peng. Peng and Platsa Ro are good friends, and she often helps Peng when he's in trouble. At one point, when Platsa Ro and Kong Sara were staying at Peepop's house, Platsa Ro hired Peng to be Peepop's personal driver because he didn't have a job at that time. However, she later found out that Peng had quit without saying goodbye, which made her wonder why he left like that. Peng apologized and explained that he had some urgent business to attend to, which making him leaving suddenly. Platsara then asked Peng to take her to Bangkok, but Tai arrived in time and forcibly pulled her away. Tai was angry and warned Platsara not to run away again, as he could get Kong Sara into trouble. Meanwhile, at We Set Thumb's house, Saad Tap showed up with his lawyer and the police to search for Platsara. When she returned home, Platsara awkwardly asked Tai to forget about what happened the previous night and promised to take something so she won't be pregnant. However, Tai was still upset because Platsara had tried to run away earlier. Soon after, Saad Tap, we said Thumb, and Man must arrive. Saad Tap even asked the police to arrest Tai on suspicion of kidnapping Platsara, leaving we said Thumb and Man must confused about what was really going on. In the end, Tan had to admit that he and Platsara were legally married. This surprised We Set Them, and made Man Must especially angry because she felt like she had been deceived. Sa Tap, who already knew about this, accused Tai of forcing Platsara into marriage and keeping her as a hostage. At that time, Platsara stayed silent because what Sa Tap said was true, but she assured everyone that she wasn't forced to stay with Tai. Sa Tap was shocked and disappointed to see Platsara protect Tai. Then, We Set Thumb asked the police and Saad Tap to leave because their accusations against Tai couldn't be proven. On the other hand, P. Nat Pa overheard this and looked surprised. Afterward, We Set Thumb asked Tai and Platsara to tell the truth. Tai explained that if he didn't keep Platsara with him, Kong Sara would surrender to the police because she had killed his father. However, We Set Thumb felt this was unfair to Platsara, who didn't know anything about it. 
We set them also asked Tai to let Platsauer go, because she was innocent. Hearing this, Platsauer Ruff felt relieved and wanted to leave Qing Mei. But Tai stopped her and reminded everyone that they were legally married and had been do the unthinkable without any force. However, Platsauret interrupted him and claimed that the previous night he was drunk, accusing Tai of wanting to sleep with her. Soon after, We Set Thumb stepped in, asking them to stop arguing, and suggested that if that's what happened, then Platsauret and Tai were indeed in love. Eventually, Tai confirmed this, which made We Set Thumb relieved and happy, because he now had a daughter-in-law. He also urged Tai to treat Platsauro well, since she didn't have anyone else besides him. After We Set Thumb returned home, Tai told Platsara that he would allow Kong Sara to fulfill her duties as a wife to him. Platsara felt happy and hugged Tai. Shortly after, Rujara then asked if it was true that Platsara and Tai were married. Tai confirmed it, and Ruj seemed worried, asking about P. Napa. Then, Tai casually replied that he didn't know and that it wasn't his concern. At night, P. Napa was still very upset. In fact, she even yelled at her father and her aunt something she had never done before. Realizing that P. Napa was heartbroken, we set them tried to comfort her, believing that P. Napa just needed time to forget about Tai. He was confident that one day she would understand and move on from her feelings for Tai. Meanwhile, the bond between Platsara and Tai was growing closer and more harmonious. The following day, P. Napa woke up feeling relieved, thinking that what happened yesterday was just a dream. Meanwhile, Saad Tap was upset with his lawyer because they couldn't get Tai arrested. At that time, Saad Tap asked his lawyer to come up with another plan to take Platsara with him. The lawyer was confused because Platsara had said he didn't have to. The lawyer explained to Saad Tap that the only way to have Platsara was to wait for him to become a widower. On the other hand, P. Napa happily gave Tai a scar she had made especially for him and invited him to have lunch together. She had prepared special food for him. However, Tai declined and apologized because he had lunch plans with his wife. Upon hearing this, P. Napa tried to hold back her tears and asked Tai to be truthful because she believed Tai loved her too. He gently tried to clarify that he only saw P. Napa as his little sister all this time. Hearing that, P. Napa was angry and disappointed. Then she ran away from Tai. Ruj, who witnessed this, became very concerned and followed after P. Napa. Meanwhile, while Tai was working on the plantation, Platsara was secretly searching for her cell phone. Saad Tap received a call from Kung Sara, who asked him to get in touch with Platsara. Later on, Platsara finally found her cell phone and coincidentally received a call from Saad Tap, who was with Kung Sara. Platsara was shocked and nearly cried. She asked where Kung Sara had been all this time and why she hadn't answered her calls. Kung Sara only said that she didn't kill Peepob. Suddenly, Tai appeared, so Platsara quickly ended the call. She then playfully teased Tai a bit and hugged him to keep her cell phone hidden. Meanwhile, Rouge mobilized his workers to search for Peen Napa. At the same time, Man must discovered we set them lying unconscious in his room. Later on, Tai and Platsara went to the hospital. However, Man must slapped Tai, blaming him for stressing we set them and causing his heart problems. She also accused Tai of making Peen Napa run away and they didn't know where she was. In the treatment room, Tai asked why We Set Thumb had kept his illness a secret, even though they were father and son. We Set Thumb reassured Tai that his condition was fine, so there was no need to worry. He then asked Tai not to leave P. Napa, even if he passed away. But Tai scolded We Set Thumb and said he had to stay alive to become a grandfather to Tai's future child. Meanwhile, outside the hospital, Platsara got a call from Kongsara who asked for help because he needed a lot of money. Later on, they met at We Set Thumb's plantation, and Platsara immediately asked where Kung Sara had been all this time and why she had run away if she hadn't done anything to harm Peepob. Kung Sara explained that she and Jess had planned to move to the United States, but Jess was actually a scam artist with a lot of debt. Now, Kung Sara was in trouble too because she was being held captive by loan sharks and they demanded a ransom of 500 million baht. Platsara was shocked and confused, wondering where she could find that much money. Afterward, Platsara returned to the hospital and told Tai that he was going home to get a blanket for We Set Thumb. Platsara didn't mention meeting Kong Sara, but she was troubled about how to get the money to rescue Kong Sara from the loan sharks.
When he got home, Todd found Platzora's cell phone in her bag. However, he wasn't upset and allowed her to have the phone back. Platzora felt a bit relieved and asked if Ty wasn't worried that Kong Saro might contact her. Ty replied that he was confident Platzora was on his side, and he hugged her. Ty said he had experienced many losses in his life, including the loss of his parents and Platzora's father, whom he considered as his own. Now, his adoptive father, we said Thumb, was also ill. There he asked Platzara not to leave him and to be with him always, and Platzara promised to stay by his side until the end of their lives. Platzara then asked what would happen if Kong Saura returned, and Tai's mood changed to irritation, reminding her not to contact Kong Saura. Platzara was even more confused because she loved Tai but also worried about Kong Saura. The next morning, there was panic among the plantation employees because the money for their salaries had gone missing but it was only 500 million baht. Tai was anxious and asked who had been in the office the previous day. Suddenly, a female staff member mentioned that Platzara had been in the administration room. Muang was surprised because it seemed unlikely that Platzara, who was the boss's wife, would steal company money. However, Tai remained silent, then went home to look for Platzara but couldn't find her. Tai remembered the incident from yesterday, when he received the report about the money for employee salaries with Platzara there in the administration room. After receiving the report, Tai instructed his staff to keep the money in the safe and distribute it the next morning. Tai and his staff then went to review the harvest sales, leaving Platzara in the administration room. Tai had a feeling that Platzara might have taken the money. On the other hand, Platzara had indeed taken the money to give to Kungsara. However, Tai suddenly came into the room and got very angry. Kung Sara quickly ran away with the bag of money, and Tai chased after her. When Kung Sara was feeling more and more pressured, Plat Sara, who was worried that Tai might harm her, immediately tried to confront Tai. However, he was not easy to defeat, and he asked Plat Sara why she had betrayed him and go with Kung Sara, the person who had ruined his life. Unexpectedly, Kung Sara suddenly attacked Tai from behind with a big piece of wood, and then told Plat Sara to escape in a car. Kung Sara then called Saatap and asked him to meet at a certain place. Meanwhile, Tai, who had a serious head injury, tried to chase after Plat Sara and Kung Sara. Unfortunately, his head wound got worse and he couldn't endure it, so he ended up falling into a river. By coincidence, Saatap, who was waiting by the river, saw Tai and tried to help him by offering a rope. However, Saatap remembered what his lawyer had told him that the only way for him to be with Plat Sara was for her to become a widow first. His love for her was so strong that Sadatap let go of the rope, and Tai was swept away by the river current. After that, Sadatap picked up Platsara, who was alone because Kong Sara had run away with some money. However, Sadatap didn't mention anything about Tai's accident. While at the hospital, We Set Thumb and Man Must were visited by the police, who informed them about P. Napa. We Set Thumb was shocked because he didn't know that P. Napa had been missing for the past three days. Surprisingly, she was found injured and extremely upset, and the doctor who examined her said it was likely that she had been assaulted by someone. This shocking news caused We Set Thumb to have another heart attack, and he passed away instantly. Meanwhile, Rouge and the search and rescue team were searching for Tai, who was unlikely to have survived due to the fast river current. At the same time, Saatap took Platsara to his apartment so she could rest for a few days. On another note, Kong Sara and Jess were caught by some loan sharks. However, the main loan shark named Sen Kum looked interested in Kong Sara and didn't let her go. The next day, Sadatap's parents visited Plat Sara and gave her a check for a billion baht so that she wouldn't contact Sadatap again. Meanwhile, Sadatap was buying a ring to propose to Plat Sara. But when he returned home, he was upset because his parents had kicked out Plat Sara, whom he loved. His father also got angry at him for dating someone like Platsara, who didn't have much to offer. At that time, Saad Tap had had enough of being controlled by his father, and they ended up having a fight. During the argument, he accidentally pushed his father against the wall, causing him to bleed heavily from his head. Saad Tap panicked and wanted to call an ambulance, but his mother stopped him, which making him dead. Because of that, it allowed Saad Tap to take control of the hospital. On the other hand, Platsara walked around with no clear direction and sadly tore up the check given to her by Saatap's parents. She said that if she had received the check earlier, 
Maybe she wouldn't have had to take Ty's money and break up with him. But now, everything had already happened, and Platsara could only regret her actions while still missing Ty. Six years later, after Ty and Platsara went their separate ways, a boy named Pusaba was living with Platsara. Pusaba was a smart and courageous child, and he was Platsara's son, living in the suburbs of Bangkok. Turns out, Busaba was also Ty's child, but Platsara had chosen to raise him on her own and hadn't seen Ty since the events of six years ago. At that time, Platsara lived in poverty, working part-time as a tailor. Despite the challenges, she managed to raise Busaba to be a good and polite child. There, she told Busaba that his father had passed away while he was still in her womb. Unfortunately, Platsara's income as a tailor couldn't cover their daily needs. So, she accepted the offer from her friend named Ya to work as a housemaid. However, she couldn't bring Busaba along with her to work, so she entrusted him to a neighbor named Showatip. Platsara took up her job as a housemaid in a house located in the hills north of Bangkok City. When she arrived, the housekeeper told her to come in and wait because the homeowner hadn't returned yet. One night, Platsara spotted the homeowner approaching and decided to go over and greet them. To her surprise, the homeowner turned out to be Ty, and this left Platsara in shock, almost bringing her to tears. However, Ty had amnesia and couldn't remember who she was. Still, Platsara couldn't contain her emotions and ended up hugging Ty while crying, expressing how much she missed him. Meanwhile, Ty was confused about why a stranger, Platsara, suddenly hugged him and cried. He asked her who she was, leaving her confused about his condition and can't recognize him. Fate seemed to bring them back together, even though Ty now had a new life with a different identity and a wife. The next day, Platsara, still bewildered by the situation, sneaked into Ty's room and saw a wedding photo of Ty with P. Napa. However, she was currently in Bangkok receiving treatment for severe depression, which had been ongoing since she was assaulted six years ago. Platsara decided not to reveal her true identity to Ty and introduced herself as Nuna, a widow of the son. Ty explained to Platsara, that he had amnesia from an accident six years ago. While P. Nat Pa was undergoing treatment in Bangkok for her severe depression following her father's passing. The next day, Ty saw Platsara cooking and felt like he had never been in that situation before. Meanwhile, Platsara felt very sad when she was around Ty, but they were like strangers who didn't know each other. Platsara decided to quit her job and chose to run away from Ty, just like she did before. When Ty found out that Platsara had resigned, he felt disappointed but didn't dwell on it too much. Ty seemed to really love P. Napa, and it was mutual. However, when it came to intimacy, P. Napa was still traumatized by a past incident, which made her always refuse when Ty asked for doing that. P. Napa kept this tragedy a secret from Ty, because she feared that he would be disgusted with her if he found out. Since Ty had amnesia, Rouge, Manmust, and P. Napa, had completely changed Ty's identity and cover his past, especially his marriage to Platsara. They did this to make Peen Napa happy. On the other hand, Busaba ended up in the hospital because of a fall, but luckily, he didn't suffer any serious injuries. Unfortunately, Platsara had trouble paying the hospital bill, but the hospital allowed her to pay it in installments. On the other hand, Ty started to recall what happened before he had amnesia that he was chasing someone. He talked about this with Rouge, who seemed nervous because she had been keeping Platsara's identity a secret, following instructions from Man Must and P. Napa. At that time, Ty felt like Rouge was hiding something from him. He also planned to visit the Chiang Mai plantation to find more information about his past. Rouge tried to stop him, but Man Must arrived and was willing to share what happened before Ty's accident. However, Man Must lied again and said that on that day, Ty was chasing Platsara a servant who had stolen money from the plantation. Ty, believing this story, didn't suspect anything else, especially since Rouge confirmed it. Later, Man Must met with P. Napa and informed her that Ty was starting to remember his past. She also asked P. Napa not to mention Platsara's name in front of Ty. Hearing this, P. Napa became very upset because she was afraid that Ty would remember Platsara, and it shook her emotionally. Meanwhile, Platsara was invited by her friend named Angela to work as a prostitute. Despite the bad side, Platsara felt forced to do it in order to pay off her hospital bills. Around the same time, Ty was at the hospital for a checkup. By chance, he found a cell phone that had fallen, and it turned out to be Platsara's phone. 
When Platsorov saw Tai in front of her, she was shocked and quickly ran away. Tai only wanted to return Platsara's phone, which he still had. He followed her to the area where she lived, but he was stopped by some bandits who wanted to rob him. Busaba, who witnessed this, shouted for help, but luckily, Tai's martial arts skills were still good, and he managed to defeat the bandits. This thing led to Tai and Busaba meeting for the first time. At that moment, Tai also discovered that Busaba is the son of Muna, also known as Platsara, his former servant. Their connection was surprisingly strong, and despite just meeting, they got along well. Tai even mentioned that he was a friend of Busaba's mom. So Busaba brought Tai to their home to introduce him to his mom. Unfortunately, Platsara wasn't there. There Tai noticed many plants near Busaba's house and taught him how to properly care for them. Busaba praised Tai, not only for his good looks and martial arts skills, but also for his gardening skills. Meanwhile, Platsara was on her way home when she saw Angela being kidnapped by several men who worked for the head of the brothel, Chora. At that time, Chora was furious because Angela had taken away some of her customers. Angela was almost being tortured and harmed, but Platsara intervened and fought off Chora's men using a block she had with her. She even struck Chora on the head with a bottle before leaving with Angela. On their way back home, Angela reminded Platsara that Chora wouldn't stay silent and would seek revenge. Afterward, Platsara arrived home to find Tai sleeping in her room. Still surprised, she asked Busaba what had happened and why Tai was in their house. There Busaba explained that Tai claimed to be a friend of his mother, so he invited him into the house. However, Tai had a headache, so Busaba allowed him to rest in a room. Platsara, on the other hand, told Busaba not to bring strangers into the house as they could be dangerous. But Bustaba assured her that Tai was a good person and skilled in martial arts. Upon hearing this, Platsara fell silent, holding back tears, and then approached Tai, who was still asleep, expressing how much she missed him. Afterwards, Platsara reminded Bustaba not to mention anything about his father to Tai. Tai woke up a little later and apologized to Platsara for falling asleep in her room due to his headache. Platsara then asked Tai to leave immediately. Right before leaving, Tai asked about her real name because she had introduced herself as Nuna the day before. Platsara felt nervous and couldn't answer him, and that's when Shawatip arrived and interrupted their conversation. Back at home, Platsara couldn't hold back her tears cause she felt guilty about hiding the fact that Tai was Busaba's biological father. Her heart felt like it was breaking because no matter how much she tried to avoid Tai, they kept running into each other. Meanwhile, Peanut Pa's mental condition was getting worse, so she had to be admitted to a mental hospital. Peanut Pa continued to be haunted by a terrible fear of the past tragedy, especially the fear of Tai finding out about the assault and leaving her. On the other hand, Platsara worked as a tailor at a clothing shop and earned a daily wage. Unfortunately, her boss was not generous. On her way home, Platsara was approached by a man who claimed that Busa Ba had been hit by a car. This surprised her, even though Busaba was actually at home preparing food for her. However, it turned out to be a trap set by Chora. Platsaraba was kidnapped by Chora's men who wanted revenge. Meanwhile, Tai, unaware of what had happened to his wife, asked Ruj why P. Napa hadn't arrived and what was going on. Ruj, following Man Must's instructions, kept P. Napa's situation a secret from Tai. He only mentioned that P. Napa was fine and in Chiang Mai for some business. Inside the empty bar, Platsara was tied up. Shortly after, Shora arrived and offered a deal for her to work as a prostitute in his brothel, believing that she could attract men. At that time, Platsara pretended to agree, hoping to find an opportunity to confront and defeat Shora. Outside the bar, Shora's men who had kidnapped Platsara fought over her cell phone until it dropped. Unexpectedly, Tai happened to pass by, picked up the phone and asked about its owner. Chora's men refused to tell him and walked away. However, Tai followed them into the bar and successfully fought them off. At that place, Tai found Platsara and rescued her from Chora. However, they were soon surrounded by Chora and his armed men from all sides. Chora even aimed a gun, so Platsara shielded Tai and in turn, he protected Platsara. Luckily, one of Chora's men informed them that the place was encircled by the police. Upon hearing that, Chora and his men fled and Tai asked Platsara why she had lied about his real name. 
Flat Saura felt nervous and left without answering him. Back home, Ya immediately asked where Plat Saura had been and who the man named Tig really was. Plat Saura didn't reveal the truth, and she only mentioned that in the past, she had worked with Tai and stolen his money. However, she added that now Tai had amnesia and didn't remember her. Yaw finally understood why Plat Saura had been avoiding Tai, cause she feared that he might recall the past and accuse her. Unexpectedly, Tai was outside Plat Saura's house and overheard their conversation. Now, Tai had learned that the person he had been chasing until the accident was actually Plat Saura. The next day, Tai told Rouge that he remembered a girl named Plat Saura. Rouge was surprised, and Tai asked if there was anything else about Plat Saura that she hadn't shared. Nervously, Rouge claimed that Plat Saura was just a former employee who had run away after stealing money. Meanwhile, in the mental hospital, P. Napa's condition began to stabilize, and she started discussing the events that had left her mentally and psychologically devastated. After the tragic assault on the very same day, Tai had an accident, and P. Napa's father also passed away. This left P. Napa feeling deeply saddened, especially because she couldn't forgive herself for what had happened to her at the hands of a stranger. But as her mental and emotional state getting bad, a glimmer of happiness shows up when she discovered that Tai had survived the accident and was suffering from amnesia. Man must then suggested that this could be an opportunity for P. Napa to find happiness with Tai. From then on, P. Napa pretended to be Tai's wife and Tai, with his amnesia, trusted her completely without any suspicion. Rouge, however, feel bad about this lie, but she felt it was necessary to help P. Napa recover and return to her normal self. The psychiatrist treating P. Napa also recommended that she should eventually share the details of the assault with Thai, as it might help ease her emotional pain. When Thai came to greet P. Napa later on, Man Musk got angry and questioned why Thai had come when P. Napa needed time to heal. But P. Napa explained that she had actually asked Thai to visit because she wanted her husband by her side. After they reached the doctor's office, P. Napa had intended to follow the psychiatrist's advice to tell Tai about the past abuse and how it was affecting her ability to be a wife to him due to the trauma. Unfortunately, she still found it too difficult to talk about. Seeing P. Napa struggling, Tai comforted her and asked her not to feel pressured to say anything she wasn't ready to share. P. Napa smiled with relief and then told the psychiatrist that she was ready to undergo treatment and work together with them. Tai then reassured P. Napa by promising to patiently wait for her to heal. He also expressed his hope to regain his memory so they could live happily together and return to Chiang Mai. On another note, even though six years had passed, Sonatap's love for Plat Sauro remained strong, and he continued to search for her but couldn't locate her. The next day, Tai spent his time in Bangkok by meeting Busa Ba and giving him a gift of new shooters and a ball. Busaba was really happy and touched because it was the first time he had received new things like his friends. When Tai heard this, he became quiet and felt sorry for Busaba. They continued playing and enjoyed some ice cream together. Platsara, who saw them having fun, scolded Busaba for not obeying her warning to avoid strangers. Surprisingly, Tai said he remembered who Platsara was cause she the worker who had run away after taking money from the plantation. Platsara stayed silent as if trying to hold back tears, while Thai mentioned that he had forgiven her. He asked Plat Saura to let him be close to Bu Saba. However, she still disagreed and firmly told Thai not to see Bu Saba again. Thai was confused by Plat Saura's protective stance, but tried to respect her decision as Bu Saba's mom. The following day at the hospital, Saatap's secretary, Duang Jia, was going through the patient's medical records. Among the documents, she came across a video showing Busta Ba and Platsara. Duang Jia also recognized Platsara as the girl her boss, Sa Atap, had been searching for. She read Platsara's personal information and found out where she lived. Meanwhile, Tai continued to secretly meet with Busta Ba and invited him to play. Platsara, however, witnessed their closeness, and it deeply hurt her to see them together. When Platsara was about to leave, she bumped into Rouge who had been following Tai. Platsara was surprised and quickly apologized for stealing money from the plantation. Rouge then asked why Platsara had been hiding all this time, even though she was Tai's legal wife. Platsara had explained that she had been tormented by guilt for six years because of the theft. She had punished herself by staying away from Tai's life. 
The next day, Saad Tap, along with Duan Jiao, arrived in the area where Plat Saura lived. However, they accidentally meet Bu Sa Ba and behaved arrogantly, unwilling to apologize. Shortly after, Saad Tap received a message from his mother, asking him to come home urgently because his wife Lisa had been in an accident. Reluctantly, Saad Tap left, unaware that it was his mother's plan. Turns out, Lady Naparam, Saad Tap's mother, had already met Platsara before. For the second time, Lady Naparam offered Platsara a check worth two billion baht, asking her to cut ties with her son because Saad Tap now had a wife. Platsara once again refused the check, saying she didn't need to worry because she had a husband and children now. On her way home, Lady Naparam bumped into Saad Tap who became angry because his mother kept interfering in his affairs. Lady Naparam was also upset and insisted that Saad Tap shouldn't go behind Lisa's back because their hospital could go bankrupt if Lisa found out Saad Tap was looking for Plat Saura. But Saad Tap is determined no matter what challenges come his way, he will keep pursuing his love for Plat Saura. Eventually, he spotted Plat Saura from afar, and he was filled with joy. He then requested Duang Jia to gather information about Plat Saura's current situation because he wanted to do better this time, without acting hastily like he did before. Some time later, Tai went to visit a doctor, and after meeting Bu Salba, Tai's health got much better. Even his eyesight started to improve, and he no longer had headaches. The doctor advised Tai to stay happy and stable so he could fully recover. Tai thought his happiness was because of Bu Salba, so he tried to get closer to Plat Saura in order to be near Bu Saba. Later, Tai went to see Plat Sara at her workplace and asked her to make a shirt for him. Plat Sara, who worked as a seller, was friendly and measured Tai's body. When they were close, Tai felt his heart beating fast, which confused him because he didn't feel that way when he was with Pin Napa. The next day, Saad Tap approached Plat Sara at work and hugged her tightly because he really missed her. However, Plat Sara told him that she had promised Lady Naparam not to see Saad Tap anymore, but he insisted on asking her to come with him for a moment. Soon after, Saad Tap took Plat Saura to a fancy apartment and showed her the room where she and Bu Saba would stay in the future. He even gave her a credit card for her. However, instead of being grateful, Plat Saura asked if she had to be in a relationship with Saad Tap to get all these benefits. Saad Tap was surprised by her question and said he was just concerned about her well-being. But Plat Saura suspected that Saad Tap wanted her to be his mistress. Saad Tap confirmed her suspicions and said that Bu Saba needed a father figure in his life. He promised to be a good father to Bu Saba. After that, Plat Saura quit her job and transferred Bu Saba to a new school. However, Bu Saba didn't agree with his mom's decision and called Tai to let him know about the move. Hearing that, Tai was shocked and hurried to meet Plat Saura. Meanwhile, Lady Naparam explained that if Saad Tap wanted to divorce Lisa for Plat Saura, they should have children first so that their kids could inherit Lisa's family wealth. On the other hand, Tai approached Plat Saura and expressed concern about her decision to move. He thought it would be tough for Bu Saba because he'd have to make new friends and get used to a new school environment. Plus, it was in the middle of the school semester, which would make it even harder for Bu Saba to catch up on lessons. Plat Saura got annoyed and told Tai not to meddle in her life because he had no right to do so. Tai then questioned why Plat Saura seemed selfish and didn't think about Bu Saba, who was still young. This made her even angrier as she felt Tai was criticizing her without understanding her efforts. Shortly after, Ya stepped in to mediate and asked Tai to leave. Inside the house, she asked if Tai was the reason Plat Saura wanted to move. However, Plat Saura denied it and explained to Yaw about Saad Tap, a man from her past who had returned and was pressuring her to become his second wife. That's why Plat Saura decided to move to avoid any more trouble with Saad Tap. Yaw also mentioned that it might be difficult because Saad Tip was very wealthy and could easily track down Plat Saura. At that time, Plat Saura realized this and, without much thought, proposed to marry Chawa Tip. Chawa Tip was surprised but happy and accepted her proposal. Some time later, they told Bu Saba about it. However, Bu Saba disagreed and didn't want Shawa Teep to be his father. Plat Saura felt embarrassed in front of Chawa Teep. Then she told Tai that when Bu Saba was little, Chawa Teep used to carry him and buy him toys, but Bu Saba still didn't want it. In fact, Bu Saba 
returned all the toys Chawa Teep had given him, which made Plat Sara emotional, and she scolded Bu Saba. Chawa Teep calmed Plat Sara and asked Bu Saba to come into the room. He told Plat Sara that they shouldn't rush because Bu Saba might need some time to adjust. In that moment, Plat Sara felt guilty towards Bu Saba, but was also tired of running away from Tai and Sa Tap. The next day, Bu Saba left home because he didn't agree with his mother marrying Chowa Teep. Plat Sara panicked when she found out. Meanwhile, at Peepop's house, Peepop's lawyer and Peepop's maid were very desperate as they were looking for Plat Sara and Tai, who had been missing for six years. At that moment, Peepop's lawyer wanted to give the inheritance to Tai and Plat Sara so they could retire soon. On the other hand, Bu Saba didn't have a place to go, so he borrowed a trader's phone to call Tai. Tai, who was worried, hurried to meet Bu Saba and brought him to his house. Bu Saba explained that he was upset because his mom was getting married again, so he ran away from home. Tai was surprised to hear that Plat Sara was getting married, but advised Bu Saba not to run away because it was dangerous. After that, Tai called Yaw and informed her that Bu Saba was at his house. Long story short, Plat Sara and Ya were getting ready to visit Tai's house but ran into Saatap instead. Plat Sara, who was annoyed and fed up, told Saatap that she had never loved him and asked him to respect her decision. Saatap was heartbroken and disappointed by Plat Sara's words. On the other hand, Bu Saba knew his mom was coming, so he got angry and locked himself in his room. Plat Sara arrived shortly after, thinking that Tai had kidnapped Bu Saba. There they tried to persuade Bu Saba to come out, but he still didn't want his mom to marry Chawa Teep. Bu Saba just wanted a father like Tai. This made Plat Saura even more irritated, and she told him that if he didn't come out, they would never meet again. Finally, Bu Saba came out, and Plat Saura took him home forcefully. However, Bu Saba sought refuge with Tai and said he wanted to be with him. At that moment, Plat Saura became even more frustrated and insisted that Bu Saba go home. But he kept acting out, so Tai asked Plat Saura to understand his current feelings. In the end, Plat Saura allowed Bu Saba to spend one night at Tai's house. When Plat Saura left, Bu Saba was really happy and went to take a shower with Tai. Bu Saba felt like he had a father, and it made him smile. Meanwhile, Saatap looked very frustrated because Plat Saura rejected him again. He had been working hard all this time just for her but she easily said that she didn't love him. Duang Jia, seeing her boss looking confused, tried to comfort Sa Tap by saying that everything wasn't over yet. The next day, Plat Saura came to pick up Bu Saba to take him home. However, he had a fever, so Plat Saura had to take care of him at Tai's house. There, Plat Saura apologized to Bu Saba for hitting him the day before, and he also felt sorry for disobeying her. At that moment, Tai noticed that they were getting along, and he was happy. Surprisingly, he also got a fever, which made Plat Saura wonder why they both got sick at the same time. Tai and Bu Saba answered together that it was because they spent two hours in the shower the day before. Hearing this, Plat Saura scolded them and gave them medicine. Tai was delighted to receive care from her. While waiting for Bu Saba to feel better, Plat Saura started cleaning Tai's house. She was touched when she saw Bu Saba and Tai sleeping while hugging each other. Plat Saura almost cried but decided to capture the moment as a keepsake. The following day, Tai took Bu Saba to an orphanage to distribute gifts and to help them appreciate having a mother. Meanwhile, at Tai's apartment, P. Napa planned to surprise Tai, but were themselves surprised when they saw Plat Saura cleaning Tai's room. There, Plat Saura tried to calm them down, saying she was just there to work, as Tai only remembered her as a former servant who had taken plantation money. Then, Plat Sarah asked P. Napa not to worry. However, Man Must didn't believe her and accused her and Tai of having a secret affair behind P. Napa's back. Hearing that made her anxious. Shortly after, Tai and Bu Saba arrived and P. Napa asked who the child was. Plat Sarah said the child was hers, but lied that Bu Saba's father had passed away. P. Napa became even more paranoid because of Plat Sarah's presence. However, she tried to act normal in front of Tai, so that he wouldn't suspect anything. Meanwhile, Plat Saura took Bu Saba to meet Chawa Teep, as Bu Saba had now accepted the relationship between Chawa Teep and his mother. Chawa Teep was happy and promised to take good care of them. 
But at the same time, Platt Saura looked sad. Unfortunately, she had no other choice. Meanwhile, Man Must kept encouraging Pinapa not to leave Platt Saura alone because she could reveal their secrets and take Ty away. But Pinapa said she wanted to stay positive as advised by the psychiatrist to have a peaceful life. Upon hearing this, Man Must went to Platt Saura's house and scolded her for coming back into Ty and Pinapa's lives after an incident six years ago. Platt Saura, feeling annoyed, accused Man Must of being shameless for changing Ty's identity. Man Must argued it was for the good of Ty and Pinapa and asked Platt Saura not to ruin Pinapa's life again due to her relationship with Ty which had caused her to become depressed and experience a terrible incident. Hearing that, Platt Saura felt shocked and sorry for Pinapa's condition. The next day, Pinapa, who had started recovering from her trauma, tried to initiate a romantic relationship with Tai, as they had never done that before. But Tai didn't seem ready and tried to refuse. Soon after, Man must inform them that Platt Saura wanted to see them. To their surprise, Platt Saura showed up with Chawa Teep, to invite Pinatpa and Ta to their wedding. Tai was shocked and heartbroken, while Pinatpa felt relieved. Platsaura told them directly that she wouldn't come back to Tai again, so Pinatpa didn't need to worry. Meanwhile, Man Must received a call from Peepop's lawyer that wanted to talk to Tai. Man Must was surprised and invited him to meet at the hospital where Pinatpa was getting treatment. Man Must also asked Peepop's lawyer not to meet Tai because Tai now has a new life with a new identity. Man must explain that revealing the truth about Tai and Platsaro would only hurt Tai and Pinapa. But Peepop's lawyer was determined to fulfill his duty to secure a legacy for Tai and Platsaro. Not long after, Tai arrived, and Peepop's lawyer immediately hugged him and called his name. Tai was confused and asked if they knew each other. Man must, feeling trapped, admitted that she had made up Tai's past. Upon hearing that, Tai felt upset because he had been deceived by Man must and Pinapa. Shortly after, Pinatpa came in tears and apologized to Tai for lying to him. Seeing Pinatpa's deep regret, Tai forgave her and told that she was still his wife, despite knowing about her past. Meanwhile, Sahatap attended Chawa Teep and Platsara's wedding, wishing Platsara happiness. On the other hand, Tai returns to Chiang Mai and goes to his old room. Soon after, Ruj approaches him, told him to come out quickly because he's afraid Pinatpa might come looking for him. Tai gets upset and demands to know what Rouge, Man Must, and Pinatpa are hiding from him. However, Tai doesn't receive a straight answer from Rouge. Frustrated, he forcefully opens a locker and discovers a marriage certificate between Platsara and himself. Tai is shocked and gives Rouge an annoyed look. Rouge, feeling guilty, finally confesses that Platsara is Tai's legal wife, and he was never married to Pinatpa. Before Chawa Teep and Platsara could officially get married, the police showed up to arrest Chowa Teep on suspicion of drug possession. Everyone, including Chowa Teep himself, was shocked, and he denied the allegations. However, the police found evidence at his barber shop, even though he was innocent of drug possession. At that time, Chowa Teep managed to escape, thanks to Saad Tap's plan, which was based on Duane Jia's idea to cancel Platt Saura's marriage. Meanwhile, Tai, who was prepared, pretended to go along with Pin Pa and Manmus' plan. He then asked Pinatpa for permission to go to Bangkok to sign some inheritance documents. At that time, Pinatpa wanted to go with him, but Tai refused, saying he would return home soon. Before leaving, Pinatpa asks Tai if they can be intimate, but he declines, pretending to have a headache. The next day, Tai arrives at his old home and meets his father's lawyer. There he explains that Tai married Platsara because of an inheritance from his father. He also mentions the mysterious death of Tai's father and Kong Sara, his father's girlfriend, who might be connected to the death. As Tai learns more about his past life, he becomes increasingly confused. He wonders why he got involved with Kong Sara and Plat Sara. However, his father suddenly collapses and passes away after fulfilling his final task of passing the inheritance to Tai. Some time later, Sa Tap happens to see Tai at the hospital and is shocked because he believed Tai had died six years ago. Meanwhile, Tai receives a call from Bu Saba, who informs him that his mother's marriage to Chawa Teep has failed. Hearing that, Tai is surprised, and Bu Saba is very happy. They agree to meet, but it turns out that Plat Saura had overheard their conversation earlier. Plat Saura is surprised at why Tai keeps interfering with his family, 
even though she had openly kicked him out. There, Ty mentioned that he might have feelings for Platsara. Hearing this, she became quiet and left him. However, Ty pretended to have a headache, which made Platsara worried and invited him to her house. At the same time, heavy rain caused Platsara's house to flood due to a leaky roof. Ty tried to fix the leak, and when the rain stopped, she asked him to leave again. But Ty had once more faked a headache and said he couldn't walk. Worried, Platsara laid him down on her bed to rest. In the evening, Ty managed to collect Busaba's hair and called Rouge, asking her to arrange a DNA test. The next day, after returning from work, a big fire broke out in Platsara's house. Thankfully, Busaba managed to escape. Afterward, Yaw and Platsara tried to find a rental house, but there were none available. Saad Tap then came and offered to temporarily rent his apartment. Platsara, with no other option, accepted the offer. In reality, the fire was part of Saad Tap's plan, inspired by Duang Jia, to get Platsara to move into his house. The following day, Lady Na Pa Rum and her men confronted Platsara, accusing her of bothering married men. There, Platsara tried to explain that she and Saad Tap were just friends, and she was only renting the apartment. However, Lady Na Pa Rum didn't believe her and them forcefully removed, causing a scene. Eventually, Busaba arrived and was threatened by Lady Naparam's men, which frightened him. Moreover, Lady Naparam slapped Platsara twice, as if she had done something wrong. Witnessing this, Busaba couldn't bear it, and struggled until his head hit the floor, causing his forehead to bleed. In that moment, Platsara could only cry while holding Busaba. Meanwhile, Tai and Rouge were confused as they searched for Busaba and Platsara. Shortly after, Yaw called Tai, and informed him about Busaba's condition, who was currently in the hospital. Then Tai rushed to the hospital, visibly worried about Busaba's health. At the same time, Sa Tap happened to arrive at the hospital as well, and Sa Tap was surprised to see Tai there. Platsaura later confided in Sa Tap, revealing that Tai had experienced amnesia due to an accident six years ago. Sa Tap was concerned about Tai's return, as it might complicate his efforts to win Platsaura back. Saad Tap also contacted Duan Jia and asked for assistance. When he returned home, Saad Tap confronted his mother for mistreating Platsara earlier. Lady Na Parum was annoyed and advised him to think rationally, as pursuing another woman would risk the financial investment in the company. Saad Tap then proposed to make Lisa pregnant to secure their relationship and requested that Lady Na Parum no longer interfere with Platsara. Hearing that, Lady Na Parum agreed to his plan. After that, Saad Tap invited Lisa to do the unthinkable, but she declined due to recent nose and jaw surgery, which prevented her from kissing. Saad Tap, however, was determined to make her pregnant, considering it the priority. The next day, Duang Jia took Plat Saura to Saad Tap's boutique for her to manage. At first, Plat Saura objected, but Duang Jia convinced her by explaining that if she was only hired as a manager, there was no need to object. In the end, Plat Saura reluctantly agreed unaware that Duan Jia had secretly put sleeping pills in her drink. Some time later, Tai received a package with a QR code inside. He copied the code and saw a picture of Platsaura tied up in a sleep. This shocked Tai, and he hurried to the location specified by the code. However, it turned out to be a trap set by Sa Tap. After a while, Tai arrived at an empty building and found himself surrounded by several men who intended to harm him. Tai managed to defeat them all and questioned one of the men about who sent them. But from behind, Sa Tap struck Tai with a stick and beat him, causing Tai to dangle dangerously over the edge of the floor. At that moment, Sa Tap stretched out his hand, triggering memories of their past in Tai's mind. In the end, Tai's memory fully returned, and he remembered that Sa Tap was the one responsible for his near drowning in the river. Then, Sa Tap hurt Tai for the second time, and Tai fell. Not only that, Sa Tap set fire to the building and made his escape. He was satisfied with his actions and promptly promoted Duang Jia to chief secretary. However, Duang Jia received a report that no body was found at the scene of Tai's supposed murder. This left Duang Jia confused and fearful of Sa Tap's potential anger. The following day in Chi Mai City, Rouge asked man must to come to the plantation because there was an urgent matter. Surprisingly, he brought her to meet Tai, who had managed to escape from Sa Tap's actions. Tai informed man must that his memory had fully returned, and he now knew everything about her deceitful actions. 
Manmust was shocked and tried to justify herself, claiming that she did all of it for Peanut Pa, who truly loved Tai. But Tai was furious because Manmust not only separated him from Platsara, but also took away his precious moments. Without shame, Manmust asked Tai to continue his life with Peanut Pa and take responsibility for her. Tai, however, pointed out that they had never been intimate, so he couldn't be responsible for her. Tai also mentioned that he wouldn't press charges against Manmust and Peanut Pa if they released him from their fake marriage. As a gesture of gratitude, Tai promised to pay off the plantation's debts and invest in it to help it succeed again. Man must agreed to this, but was worried about how Peen Nap Pa would react, as she would likely be emotionally shaken. Fruge also wondered how Tai suddenly regained his memory. Tai explained that he almost died, and the incident triggered his memories. After he fell and fainted during the fire, Husa Ba called him, which woke him up and allowed him to escape. With his memory restored, he decided to return to Bangkok and end his relationship with Peen Nap Pa on his own terms. He asked Rouge to take good care of Peen Nap Pa, while Plat Sara and Pu Sa Ba had a better life thanks to Sa Tab's help. On the other hand, Man Must didn't tell Peen Nap Pa if Tai's memory had come back. She just said that Tai needed to go back to Bangkok because his dad's company was facing a lot of issues. Meanwhile, at his house, Tai asked Yaw where Plat Sara and Pu Sa Ba were. Yaw tried to keep it a secret as per Plat Sara's instructions. But Tide eventually revealed that Plat Sara was his wife and Bu Saba was his son. Yaw was shocked and couldn't believe it. So Tai showed her their marriage certificate and a DNA test for Bu Saba. The next day, Yaw invited Bu Saba to the movies, but she unexpectedly ran into Tai as well. Tai couldn't hide his happiness at seeing Bu Saba, his biological child, and Hu Saba was happy to meet Tai again. Meanwhile, Platsara had dinner with Saad Tap while celebrating his birthday. But when he was about to blow out the candles, Tai showed up, which shocked Saad Tap, because he thought Tai had disappeared in the fire from the previous day. Platsara was also confused by Tai's sudden appearance, but Tai didn't explain himself and just commented on how Saad Tap seemed like an angel but had a deceitful heart. Tai then asked Platsara to meet Bu Saba outside the house. After Platsara went outside, Tai warned Sa Tap not to bother them anymore because he just wanted to live in peace with his family. Outside, Plat Sa Ro was confused because she didn't find Bu Sa Ba, but instead ran into Yaw. Soon after, Tai appeared and invited Plat Sa Ro to come along if she wanted to see Bu Sa Ba. Surprisingly, he took her to his old house, which caught Plat Sa Ro off guard. Despite this, Plat Sa Ro immediately started searching for Bu Sa Ba, but couldn't find him. She got frustrated and asked Tai for answers. There, he told her to stop pretending because he had remembered everything, including the fact that Plat Sauro was legally his wife and he was Bu Sa Ba's biological father. Plat Sauro was shocked by Tai's recovered memory, but insisted that Bu Sa Ba wasn't Tai's child. However, Tai showed Plat Sauro the DNA test results, leaving her with no more excuses. Tai was upset and wondered why Plat Sauro had hurt him so much. She had betrayed Tai six years ago and had kept him away from his biological child. At that moment, Plat Sa fell silent, realizing how cruel she had been to Tai. Now, Tai only asked her to stay at home and obeyed his commands. If she refused, he threatened to tell Bu Sa Ba that he was his biological father. Shortly after, Bu Sa Ba arrived and asked Plat Sa Ra to stay at Tai's house because she was happy living there. From that day on, they grew close, behaving like father and son, even though Bu Saba didn't yet know that Tai was his biological father. Meanwhile, in Ching Mai, Pin Nap Pa still had feelings for Tai, especially when she received messages from him. However, these messages were actually sent by Rouge on Manmus orders. The next day, Tai asked Plat Sara to come to his office and offered her a job as a secretary. At first, she hesitated because she didn't think she was good at this job. Tai also suggested that if she didn't want to work as his secretary, she could stay at home and be a housewife while he supported her. Tai didn't want her to work outside, especially with Saad Tap. After that, they picked up Bu Sa Ba from school, and they looked like a happy family. Meanwhile, Saad Tap managed to bring Kong Sara back from Myanmar, where she had been living. However, his real intention in bringing Kong Sara back was to win Plat Sara back. Shortly after, Plat Sara met Kong Sara at Saad Tap's place and both Platsara and Kong Sara were delighted to reunite. 
There, Plat Saura thanked Sa Tap for bringing her sister home and decided to let Kung Saura stay in their house. But as they were driving, Tai intercepted their car, surprising both Plat Saura and Kung Saura. Unexpectedly, Tai greeted Kung Saura. But she quickly explained that she wasn't responsible for Peepop's death. However, Tai didn't seem to mind and asked Kung Saura to come home with him because, after all, she was his sister in law. When they arrived home, Tai introduced Kung Saura to Bu Sa Ba. Kung Saura was surprised to learn that Plat Saura already had a child with Tai. While in the room, Plat Saura asked Kung Saura where she had been for the past six years. Kung Saura explained that she had been involved with the Myanmar Mafia and had worked in a casino. However, she had chosen to join a wealthier mafia, which had made her life even more difficult. Plat Saura felt deeply sorry to hear about Kung Saura's tough experiences. Meanwhile, Kung Saura asked how Plat Saura could marry and have children with Tai when she knew that Tai had been dating Kung Saura. Plat Saura mentioned that it all started with a will written by Peepob. Kung Saura also realized that Plat Saura and Tai didn't get married out of love. The next day, Tai gave Kung Saura a monthly allowance. Kung Saura asked if Tai believed that she wasn't Peepob's killer. Tai replied that he didn't want to dwell on that issue because he wanted to enjoy his time with Bu Sa Ba without having hate on anyone. Meanwhile, in Chiang Mai, Plat Saura's old friend Feng, who had once worked as Peepob's driver, accidentally saw Pi Nap Pa and smirked mischievously. In the evening, Tai gave Plat Saura sexy lingerie in an attempt to spice up their romance. However, she shyly declined because she didn't like such revealing lingerie. Tai reminded her that they were husband and wife, wondering why she felt that way. Kung Sara, who had been watching from behind the door, looked annoyed. Soon after, Kung Sara approached them, complimented the lingerie, and asked for it from Plat Sara. There, Plat Sara kindly gave the lingerie to Kung Sara. Afterward, she asked Tai what he had in mind when buying this lingerie because it fit her body perfectly. Soon Busaba came and said he wanted to sleep with Kung Sara and his mom that night, so Tai had to sleep alone. In the middle of the night, Kung Sara sneaked into Tai's room wearing the lingerie. Without shame, she hugged and kissed him. This woke Tai up, and he was surprised to see her. However, she continued to seduce him and tell her love for him. Kung Sara also believed that Tai loved him because his marriage to Plat Sara had been arranged by a will. Tai was upset with Kung Sara's behavior got out of bed, and asked her to leave. But she persisted and threatened to scream as if Tai had mistreated him. Tai was in phase and mentioned that there was CCTV in his room, so Kong Sara couldn't get away with it. Now it was Kong Sara who was shocked, and he left Tai in annoyance. On the other hand, Plat Sara was still awake and knew what Kong Sara had done earlier. Peng secretly entered Pin Napa's room, which startled Pin Napa. Peng was holding a knife and asked Pin Napa, menacingly how she was doing. It turned out that six years ago, he had given her a ride when she was running away. He had also helped her rent a villa and was the one who had assaulted her. Fortunately, Rouge knocked on Pi Napa's door, causing Peng to hurriedly leave. There, Rouge entered the room and found Pi Napa in a frightened state. He tried to calm her down, but her panic escalated, and she attacked Rouge with scissors, causing serious injuries. The following day, as Tai was getting ready for work, he told Plat Sara that Kung Sara had tried to seduce him the previous night. Plat Sara, who already knew about it, didn't show much emotion. Tai felt annoyed by Plat Sara's reaction, and Plat Sara denied being indifferent, insisting that he believed Tai wouldn't cheat on him. However, Tai remained irritated and suggested that they have another child to prove his love for Plat Sara. Plat Sara felt embarrassed and tried to run away, but Tai quickly followed. When they got downstairs, they were surprised by P. Napa's arrival, and she was also surprised by the romantic situation. She asked why Plat Sara was at Tai's house. Plat Sara attempted to calm P. Napa down, but instead, she received a slap from P. Napa, which angered Kong Sara. There, Kong Sara warned P. Napa not to touch Plat Sara. If she did, Kong Sara will hurt her. Then, P. Napa questioned why Tai would betray her. Tai explained that his memory had returned, and he had discovered that Pin Nat Pa and Man must have been deceiving him for six years. Can't accept this truth, Pin Nat Pa eventually lost consciousness, and Tai rushed her to the hospital. Afterward, Tai called Man Must and asked why she hadn't informed Pin Nat Pa. 
Man must explain that she had let Pin Nat Pa believe in a false happiness. Tai was shocked by her cold-heartedness, realizing that her actions had caused Pin Nat Pa's mental illness over the past six years. Meanwhile, Kong Sara talked to Sa Tap about the situation and saw it as an opportunity for Sa Tap to win Plat Sara away from Tai. They planned to work together to separate Plat Sara and Tai, so that Sa Tap could be with Plat Sara and Kong Sara could return to Tai. Kong Sara was determined to protect Plat Sara from any harm, and she believed that no one should hurt Plat Sara except for herself. Meanwhile, at the hospital, the psychiatrist explained that Pin Natpa's condition had regressed, and the only person who could calm her down was Tai. However, the real path to Pin Natpa's recovery was for her to come to terms with the fact that Tai was not her husband. Plat Sara asked if Pin Natpa would recover if Tai returned to her. The psychiatrist said it was possible but emphasized that helping her accept reality was a better approach. Despite feeling sorry for Pin Nat Pa, Plat Sara was willing to give up Ta to reunite with her. When he returned home, Ta was upset and asked why Plat Sara always considered other people's feelings over her own. He told Plat Sara to stop thinking that way because Pin Nat Pa would likely recover even without him. At night, Plat Sara saw Ta and Bu Sa Ba sleeping together which made her cry tears of happiness for their little family. However, she also felt guilty for finding joy in the midst of Pin Nat Pa's suffering. The very next morning, Plat Sara packed her things and asked Bu Sa Ba to leave. Thankfully, Tai was aware of Plat Sara's plan and stopped her. But Plat Sara remained determined to leave Thai. Eventually, Tai had to reveal to Bu Sa Ba that he was his biological father. Plat Sara tried to intervene, thinking it would only confuse Bu Sa Ba. When Bu Sa Ba learned the truth from Tai, Kong Sara arrived and tried to manipulate Bu Sa Ba into hating his parents for lying to him. However, Bu Sa Ba actually cried and immediately hugged Tai, expressing his happiness that Tai was indeed his biological father. At that moment, Tai and Plat Sara were relieved, and Kong Sara's attempt to break them apart failed. Meanwhile, Pin Nat Pa, filled with anger towards Tai and Plat Sara, took all the gold and money. In their room, Plat Sara cried and apologized to Pin Nat Pa. Tai comforted Plat Sara and asked her not to blame herself, as healing Pin Nat Pa was not their responsibility. Plat Sara understood that but still couldn't shake the guilt for what had happened to Pin Nat Pa. Hearing that, Tai asked about what Plat Sara meant, and she explained that when Tai had announced their marriage, Pin Nat Pa's mental state was getting worse, leading her to run away and in the Ned get assaulted. Tai was shocked to learn this, as it was news to him. On a different note, Sa Tap became a source of pride for his in-laws as Lisa became pregnant. Meanwhile, Pin Nat Pa met Peng and offered him valuable gold and diamonds in exchange for his help in seeking revenge. The following day, Tai and Plat Sara went to the plantation, but Pin Nat Pa was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Tai received a call from Pin Nat Pa asking him to meet her urgently. However, Kong Sara took the phone and asked about the location. After picking up Bu Saba from school, Kong Sara asked Bu Saba to wait in the car while she approached Pin Nat Pa. Pin Nat Pa was surprised and asked about Tai's whereabouts, but Kong Sara explained that she was there as Tai's sister-in-law. Kong Sara also advised Pin Nat Pa to show give space and not use her past tragedy of being assaulted to get Tai's attention. When Pin Nat Pa heard about the assaulted, she had a panic attack. However, Kong Sara continued, urging Pin Nat Pa to stay away from Thai, as Thai found it difficult to be with a woman who had experienced what Pin Nat Pa had. Pin Nat Pa's panic became uncontrollable, and she ended up grabbing Kong Sara's hair and forcefully hitting her head against a chair. Meanwhile, Plat Sara and Thai visited Rouge in the hospital. Rouge then informed Thai about Pin Nat Pa's long-standing panic disorder is from her past experience of being assaulted. On the other hand, Pin Nat Pa tried to lift Kong Sara's body, and was assisted by Peng, who recognized Kong Sara as an old friend. However, it seemed that Peng held a grudge against her. Soon after, Bu Sa Ba went looking for Kong Sara, and ended up being taken as well. Meanwhile, Tai, along with Plat Sara and Muang, were still searching for Pin Nat Pa in the plantation area. Then Tai received a call from his maid, who informed him that Kong Sara and Bu Sa Ba had not returned home. They both became anxious, but Plat Sauret asked Tai to focus on finding Pin Nat Pa, 
while he headed home to check on Bu Saba. Meanwhile, in a hut in the middle of the forest, Kong Sara and Bu Saba were held captive by Peng, following Pi Napa's orders. However, Peng, who held a grudge, had plans to harm Kong Sara. Back when Plat Saara had hired Peng as Peepop's driver, she falsely accused him of harassing her, even though it wasn't true. Peepop, anchored by that, told his men had brutally beaten Peng. Turns out it was Peng who entered Peepop's study and fatally stabbed him as a revenge. Kung Sara was shocked to hear this and became even more frightened, trying to apologize to him. Shortly after, Bu Sa Ba pleaded for his aunt's safety. However, Peng became even more enraged. It was then that Kung Sara shouted and revealed that Bu Sa Ba was Plat Saura's son. Peng was taken aback as Plat Saura had been his best friend. Meanwhile, Tai received a call from Pi Napa, who informed him that Bu Sa Ba was with her and asked him to come over. On the other hand, Peng remembered all the kindness Plat Saura had shown him, so he couldn't bring himself to harm Bu Sa Ba. Instead, he led Bu Sa Ba away and showed him the way out of the forest. At the same time, Pi Napa were overjoyed to see Tai again and asked him to live together like before. Tai agreed, but only as an older brother to her. Upon hearing this, Pi Napa refused, but Tai urged her to open her heart, as there were people who genuinely loved her and could bring happiness into her life. Tai was referring to Rouge. Sadly, Pi Napa rejected this idea, feeling that her self esteem had been damaged to the point where no one could truly love her. Frustrated, she handed a gun to Tai and asked him to kill Peng, the person who had assaulted her. She believed that this would help her return to a normal and peaceful life. On the other hand, Plat Sa Rut and Muang managed to track Bu Sa Ba's location using the GPS on Bu Sa Ba's watch, which Tai had installed. There, Plat Sa Rut asked Muang to stay in the car and call the police. Meanwhile, Kong Sa Ra successfully escaped after incapacitating Peng's men and went into hiding. Surprisingly, Bu Sa Ba found Kong Sa Ra and expressed that he couldn't bear to leave Kong Sa Ra alone. Witnessing this, Kong Sa Ra was deeply moved and asked Bu Sa Ba, to run out of the forest and seek help. There, Kong Saura said she will try to distract Peng's men, while Bu Saba manages to escape and meet Muang. Fortunately, Plat Saura saves Kong Saura from being shot by Peng's men. Soon after, Pi Nat Pa and Tai come to the hut where Kong Saura and Bu Saba were held, but they find no one there. Tai is worried about Bu Saba and annoyed at Pi Nat Pa for trusting Peng. Suddenly, Peng appears and points a gun at Tai. Turns out, Peng holds a grudge against Tide because of Peepop's actions and plans to kill him, just like he killed Peepop. Pi Napa, who is annoyed, tries to hit Peng, but he escapes. Peng gets angry and points his gun at Pi Napa, but Platsara arrives just in time to stop him. Soon after, Tai and Peng start fighting, and Platsara pleads with Peng not to harm Tai, mentioning their mothers. However, Peng doesn't care because his mother is also dead, and he sees no reason to spare anyone. Then, Tai tells Peng that he is still a monster for hurting innocent girls like Pi Napa. Plat Saura is shocked to learn that Peng is the man who raped Pi Napa. Peng, feeling cornered, tries to shoot Tai, but he is shot first by Manmust. At that time, everyone is shocked, and Manmust takes the opportunity to defend Pi Napa by shooting Peng repeatedly, while Pi Napa becomes increasingly hysterical. Shortly after, the police arrive and arrest Pi Napa and Manmust. Afterward, Plat Sa Ra and Tai reunited with Bu Sa Ba, who had been released by the police. They were proud of Bu Sa Ba's bravery and his caring nature toward his aunt. Meanwhile, Man Must was charged with Peng's murder and asked Tai to continue looking after Pi Nat Pa, as per Wee Set Thumb's wishes, who had passed away. However, Pi Nat Pa's mental health deteriorated, making it impossible to continue the legal process. As time passed, Tai enjoyed a happy life with Bu Sa Ba and Plat Sa Ra, who could now live peacefully. Meanwhile, Duang Jia put sleeping pills in Lisa's drink, causing her to fall asleep and drown in the shower. Sa Tap had ordered this to happen to make Lisa miscarry. On the other hand, Kong Sa Ra had repented and asked Sa Tap to let things be because Plat Sa Ra and Tai were now happy. But Sa Tap persisted and convinced Kong Sa Ra to try and take Tai back and regain her position as the head of Tai's household just like before. Kung Sara hesitated because she didn't want to do evil deeds anymore, especially to Plat Sara and Bu Sa Ba. 
However, Saha Tap threatened her by showing evidence of their agreement, where she had promised to separate Plat Sara and Tai. At that time, Kuang Sara was shocked and feared that Plat Sara would hate her if she found out the truth. During dinner, Kuang Sara remained silent, watching Plat Sara, Tai, and Bu Saba, who seemed like a loving family. Later that night, Kong Sara finally revealed the agreement with Sa Tap to Plat Sara, which would have separated Plat Sara and Tai. Kung Sara admitted feeling jealous of Plat Sara, but realized that Plat Sara deserved this happiness more than her. Hearing that, Plat Sara reassured Kong Sara and said she had no problem with the agreement as long as Kong Sara promised to change and not run away again. The following day, Plat Sara met Sa Tap and asked him to stop bothering her by involving Kung Sara because Plat Sara truly loved Tai. She made it clear that even if she had to separate from Tai, it wouldn't make her turn to Saa Tap. But Saa Tap continued to provoke her by falsely claiming that Tai had cheated on her and slept with Kung Sara, trying to make Plat Sara doubt her relationship. Unexpectedly, Tai arrived and was irritated by Saa Tap's false accusations. Plat Sara calmed Tai down, preventing him from doing violence. Tai reminded Sa'a Tap of his previous warning to stay away from Plat Sa'ra. Surprisingly, Sa'a Tap admitted that he had accidentally let Tai drown in the past. Plat Sa'ra was shocked to hear this, and Tai explained that Sa'a Tap was the one who had allowed her to drown, despite initially helping Tai. At that moment, Sa'a Tap asked Plat Sa'ra not to believe Tai's words. Shortly after, Ruj arrived and immediately informed Plat Sa'ra that Sa'a Tap had harmed Tai again a few weeks ago. In fact, Saad Tap had nearly burned Tai alive. Unexpectedly, Saad Tap's men arrived, and he ordered them to attack Ruj and Tai, but not to harm Plat Sara. Then, a fight broke out, and Saad Tap struck Tai from behind with a stick. Plat Sara reacted quickly and kicked Saad Tap until he fell. Saad Tap felt heartbroken because he was kicked by the person he loved. Afterward, they left Saad Tap's house. A little while later, Saad Tap went to the hospital to visit Lisa. The doctor explained that Lisa had a miscarriage because she took too much sleeping medication. Lisa's father was furious with Saad Tap for giving her the sleeping pills, but Saad Tap acted like he didn't know about it. Soon after, Duan Jia confessed that she was the one who had given Lisa the sleeping pills because she wanted her to die so she could be with Saad Tap. Duan Jia did this to protect Saad Tap from Lisa's father's accusations. Saad Tap pretended to be angry to make people believe her. After knowing that, Lisa's father immediately called the police to take Duang Jia to jail. Meanwhile, Tan had a headache and passed out. After a hospital examination, he told Plat Sara that he only had a headache because he was tired. However, he lied to Plat Sara about his condition because he didn't want to worry her. Back at home, Kong Sara realized that Tai was keeping something from everyone. Tai eventually told Kong Sara about his illness but asked her to keep it a secret from Plat Sara. The next day, Tai bid farewell to Bu Sa Ba and Plat Sara, saying he was going out of town for work. After Tai left, Kong Sara felt sad because she couldn't bear the thought of Bu Sa Ba losing his father again. Seeing Kong Sara cry, Plat Sara asked if something was wrong, and she finally revealed that Tai wasn't going out of town, but to the hospital for surgery. While on his way, Tai was confronted by two men who pulled out a gun. Fortunately, Tai managed to dodge their attack. Surprisingly, one of the men who tried to harm Tai turned out to be Chawa Teep, who had been hired by someone as a hitman. The person who had hired Chawa Teep was none other than Sa Tap, who still wanted to kill Tai to win Plat Sara's heart. Meanwhile, Plat Sara arrived at the hospital and learned that Tai had a brain tumor. However, the surgery Tai underwent was very risky and could potentially lead to complete paralysis. On the other hand, Saad Tap got into a heated argument with Lisa's father, who had received video evidence showing that he intentionally caused Lisa to miscarry. Saad Tap was shocked and claimed that the video had been manipulated. But Lisa's father didn't believe him and threatened Saad Tap, warning that his life would never be peaceful from that point on. The next day, Tai's surgery went well, but he still needed further examinations. The doctor asked Plat Sara to pray for Tai to wake up without any issues. Meanwhile, Saha Tap visited Duang Jia in prison and gave her a ring to propose to her. He said that Duang Jia was the only person who would always believe in him. At that moment, she couldn't believe it and felt incredibly happy. Saha Tap hugged her and whispered that Duang Jia would testify that she had convinced him to give the sleeping pills, 
and he promised that once Duang Jia was free, they would get married and be happy together. Turns out, Sa Tap's proposal to Duang Jia was just a trick to avoid blame from Lisa's dad, who was very harsh. The following day, Lady Na Parum took Sa Tap to his father's house, who had regained consciousness. She also asked Sa Tap to apologize and mend his relationship with his father. At first, Sa Tap tried to avoid it because he was scared of getting scolded again. With fear in his heart, he still begged for forgiveness. However, his father asked why Sa Tap had lost so much weight and was worried that he wasn't eating well. Sa Tap burst into tears and hugged his father. Shockingly, Sa Tap was suddenly shot in the head, causing his parents to become hysterical. It was Lisa's father seeking revenge for what Sa Tap had done to his daughter. Soon after, Duang Jia cried uncontrollably when she learned that Sa Tap had passed away. On the other hand, Tai is in the process of recovering, and luckily, he didn't suffer from paralysis. Hu Saba is always by his side, which reminds Tai of his father. Soon after, Kong Sera came in and apologized for her past mistakes. However, Tai doesn't want to dwell on the past anymore. Kung Sanura also confessed that in the past, she was the one who pursued Peepob, even though he tried to resist her. Kung Sanura hopes that by telling the truth, Tai can find it in his heart to forgive his father. Then, Tai went back to looking at photos of his father and found that his father's cell phone wallpaper was a picture of Tai at his graduation. There, he couldn't help but cry as he remembered this, and Platsara came to comfort him. Meanwhile, P. Nat Pa's situation has started to improve thanks to Rouge who is always there for him and never leaves his side. Pinapa also asked Rouge to bring in the handkerchief he had given to Manmust, along with the letter inside. In the letter, Pinapa expressed gratitude for Manmust's love. Soon after, Rouge informed Tai and Platsara about Pinapa's progress. Knowing this, Platsara expressed how much they missed Pinapa. The next day, Tai and Platsara are now in Chiang Mai, taking over for Rouge who was busy caring for Pin Nat Pa. Tai felt very happy and thankful, because destiny always brought him to Platsara. Long story short, Tai, Platsara, and Bu Saba sat together on the plantation. There he asked why his father and mother fell in love and got married. Platsara explained that Tai had pushed her into marriage, even though she didn't want to. Then, Tai playfully teased Platsara again, saying that she had fallen in love first but was too afraid to admit it. And with that, this dramatic series came to an end. The moral lesson from this series is if you have a brain tumor, don't let it get in the way of your true love cause love will find the way in the end.